Boo yeah! Welcome back to Hello. Sunday Tea Book episode 38. So a while ago, like three or four episodes ago, I was sort of criticized for my enthusiasm about the number of episodes we've had for Sunday Tea Book. Never again shall I curb criticized. my enthusiasm. I am stoked. <laughs> episode 38, 38 Sunday Tea Books in a row. <laughs> Every Sunday, 1 p.m. without fail, this is where you are going to get some great quality um, Chinese tea information. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing my Donald Trump impression, which is totally out of vogue now. I got to learn my Joe Biden. I, right. What does Joe Biden do anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Um, holy DeLorean and horror show. I beat the time warp. Yes. yes. Way to go. Time signature MMA. Igor. Hola. All right, episode 38, guys. Wow. We are uh, into our second episode of a fantastic paper. So welcome to everybody on Instagram. Welcome to all of you guys who are on YouTube, already letting us know what you're sipping. I love it. Let everybody know what you're sipping on YouTube. Instagram, let us know what you're sipping. But get on over to YouTube. I'll tell you why in a while. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 38. Lolo, hello. Did I say hello to Josh and Jubaijia? They were like already here when we are uh, like early. And Jubaijia is having some green tea. And Fernanda, hello, how are ah. you? Oi, right? It's Oi, Oi, Fernanda. I think so. All right, welcome <laughs> to episode 38. What is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I, mostly Jen. No, no, I get involved too. You get a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. We take a book, article, or a paper that is absolutely jam-packed with great information about Chinese tea and its culture, uh, or its culture, it depends. This one is Chinese tea. And uh, we, this thing is full of great information, but it's not very accessible or uh, little known or both in the West. So we bring it to you guys. We go over the translation. We make corrections. We clarify muddiness and mistakes and stuff like that. Why do we do that live? Why don't we just publish the fixed version? Because over my years learning about Chinese tea, going through this process has been incredibly valuable in terms of learning the sort of the background, the culture, the reason for the differences, the reason for the confusion. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to read it soon. When one of us laughs and the other one doesn't know what's going on, it's generally because one of you guys said something funny. So keep those funny comments rolling in. Anyway, so the whole process of doing this together is really, really informative. It really adds to your, more than adds to your tea understanding toolbox, it does that. But it also understands, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it actually adds to your understanding of other cultures, not just Chinese culture. Yes, that's what we're involved with, but it, it kind of opened my mind anyway to how I think I understand a culture because I understand my own, but how different they can be still the same in many ways, but just getting in tune with some of those differences gives you a more open mind, I think. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. You tell me what you think about that. Uh, but that is what Sunday Tea Book is. Hello, Tea Farmer Girl. I love that handle. Hello, Tea Farmer Girl on Instagram. Hello, letters and things um, from, I guess, New York Oh no, the, I thought you're... Um, NYC. I thought it said NYC, but it says hey. So anyway, uh, hello letters and things on Instagram. We are uh, mm. just kicking off Sunday Tea Book, which really happens on YouTube. So if you're interested in participating, jump on over to YouTube just as soon as you can. Right. Today is the second episode of um, Tea Classification and... <laughs> Don't eat it! <laughs> so time signature is having dinner, tea, supper and guests. Not no tea, having supper and guests, <laughs> and it's got kale in it. It's probably delicious. You, if you prepare it, really it, depends on how you. The preparation prepare, is yeah. everything. So second episode of tea classification in theory and uh, practice. practice. Uh, we're gonna talk about tea names. Uh, mm. So this is a very the document. Uh, tea the nomenclature. Article, right. A little bit different. That's very mm. pro way to say it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the interesting thing about this article we're reading is by Chen Chuan in 1970s mm. and this is the origin, the birth, uh, birthplace uh, yeah. of uh, 60 types that we're familiar with today like uh, uh, black, uh, dark, uh, green, oolong, all those uh, tea types. So uh, it's kind of uh, good for us to dive into a little bit de more detail mm about what are real tea types, how it's really categorized more than just uh, 
uh, process. But of course, if you want a quick intro about what is T type, we have two videos on it. One is introduction level, one is a Links little bit below. more. Uh, more explanation and this one dives deep into the whole system the whole it. background of the system yes. the reason for the system the why's the how's the what's the situation now's mm. <laughs> anyway <laughs> um, and the interesting super thing, interesting yeah interesting thing about this is we have the translated uh, version as well the link is in the Not YouTube bad. description uh, yes uh, down description below. box down below. So uh, at, and the English is not only not bad, it's actually impeccable. As an English reader, you mm. wouldn't have any headache. But that's Which? exactly because of that, it would make people feel like everything you are reading is all correct. But there is still a little misalign in terms of Chinese and English. That's why we're going to talk about that in the live. Yeah, so that, that reason and as well, this is a really important, everybody knows Lu Yu. I just want to say this too, mm -hmm. one of the reasons we picked this document as well, other than the English translation is so good, the misleading stuff can go completely, like you're just going to think this is accurate because it's not only a great translation like Jen said, but it's so academically phrased, you might be afraid to challenge it because it's so well written. Um, but it doesn't mean every little bit of it's right. But the other reason is, is Chen Chuan was such a pivotal figure in Chinese tea. And as large, everybody knows Lu Yu, but that's not the tea you're drinking. This is the tea you're drinking. And this is the guy who kind of got it squished into the right spots. And so we could classify it and organize it into what we call white tea. We're gonna talk more about it. There's some interesting stuff in this very chapter that kind of when you're sitting in this paradigm that we're in, you have to kind of back up and say, whoa, hang on a sec. So we'll get there. Um, the format's a little different. If you're familiar with the um, China, China Tea, the book we covered last time, all of those episodes are available on our website. You can find them also. Start with the link below and navigate around in the Sunday Tea Book area. You will find an absolute uh, library of information from that book. It's a great reference, so you can um, bookmark that or whatever you want to do or go back to that on our website. The episodes are linked there on our website as well as that full translation. We're not quite doing it the same way this time. Because the translation is so darn decent, we're just going to um, go summarize it and then dive into the key areas and go over those with you in detail. So as Jen said, the link to the translated document is down below, so grab that. Instagram, it's time for us to say goodbye. Uh, so head over to YouTube if you want to continue on with Sunday Tea Book for this week, and we'll catch you next time. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right. Max is drinking some unsmoked Laksan Souchong Fa Kong Wan. Sounds really good. Yeah. I'm Sunday. gonna brew up some. Camera, please. Right on. We are brewing up. Dun, 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 dun. That's the mini one. That's good enough for now. Okay, so Sunday oh, tea. Pretty nice, uh, pretty nice Some Yu Guan Bai Bai Mudan white yeah. tea. Oh my gosh. Go. Super stoked to have this. And Here look at how pretty that is. I'll switch camera. Hey, oh, that's wrong. Sorry. <gasps> we will see. We will see. Da, 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 da. There oh, we, here go. we go. Look here at how go. pretty that leaf is. I love the contrasting right? the white, black and white. Almost silver leaf with the. Uh, with the dark black, oh, so pretty. Yeah, it looks a little bit yellowish red in, mm. the, in the camera from my side. And my hands is a slightly off color, but in general, you get the gist you of get it. You get the gist. Yeah, this is Plus the, you saw it on the uh, intro roll too. Right, you said this is what, four grams? Four grams of leaves? This is four grams of leaf. Time Signature made a good point. If you're used to reading academic papers, then I think you're also less prone to being intimidated by the style. Yes, mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. If yes. you're used to that, then you're used to, then you understand academic papers are to be challenged. That's the whole reason they're put forth, mm -hmm. is to uh, not just to absorb information, but to uh, question methodology, challenge them, you know? So yes, I think if you're a, an academic and familiar with that um, format, mm -hmm. you're gold. Cauliflower uh, ferment is garlic. Uh, I'm lost now. Ali shines in your one cup pitcher. Kale, kraut, shrimp, cauliflower, cauliflower fermented garlic, and more equals yummy. Yeah, that does sound really good. Is kraut like the like a fermented cabbage, like a sauerkraut sort of thing? Is that what that is short for? 
That's really cool. And Josh says he's breaking into my 2013 Jingmai Sheng cake today. Haven't had any caffeine yet today. I've been saving up for today's tea book. All right, well, it is cool. time to caffeinate, folks, which um, I never really think of tea as doing that. It does give me a little boost, but it's kind of a, I don't know, different. All right, That's so. Really not too much of a boost, I feel. Yeah, it depends. It doesn't have that kind of, the kick I guess because I'm not a caffeine sensitive, so nothing yeah, is really, uh, you know. She can have kick. a cup of coffee right before bed, no problem. Thank you. Because I feel you are about to jump in tea trivia. No, we'll do a little tasting and then we'll get there, okay guys? I got, of course, the regular, I, I should have... I can uh, feel the excitement here about looking for the, the I should have plugged it a little bit um, on the other, in the intro a bit more, but um, I threw out some tweets and stuff. We've got, of course, we've got tea trivia coming up. I didn't hear any tasting notes. Oh, true. <laughs> I got rejected to come back yes. for a second round. All right, let me tell you what I'm smelling here. Is that I'm smelling it, but you guys have no idea what it smells yeah, you like. Yeah, you got to guess. <laughs> it's light, a little bit sweet, a little house sweetness. A little bit of dry hay. I'm looking forward to tasting this. It's been a while. I went back through our list of all the teas we've been brewing and and made sure that I pick a tea like I did last week that is a little bit underrepresented. White tea, indeed, mm -hmm. underrepresented. And this one is a really nice one. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's uh, not enough leaf. Four gram for two people for an hour or something session. <laughs> Guys, I, I don't know. I'm not, not very good with uh, like you tell me how many gram is perfect for two people for that lens. I really have to look at the leaf. But when I saw this leaf, I would just feel like, hmm. What am I doing now? I'm getting the heck out of here. I'm getting seriously disciplined. So let's get over here. Tea trivia time. <laughs> Whew, that was a close one. I had to get out of that hot water quick. Where's my little, here we go. All right, guys, it is time for tea trivia. Just before we launch into our regular Sunday tea book, we're gonna have some fun. We're getting started in about 10 seconds. As always, take a guess, participate. There's no, uh, no one's gonna judge you. There will be a little bored to see how everybody did, but it's just for fun. Punch in the number, hit enter, here we go. Which is not a common way to name a tea? Which is not a common way to name a tea? Is it the root structure, the leaf shape, the roots to market, or the plant variety. That's right, Lolo, it's tea trivia time. All right, so here we go on our first question. Which is not a common way to name a tea? Is it one, root structure, two, leaf shape, three, roots to market, or four, plant variety? I went really quickly to tea time because I was in trouble. Right. Did you like that? Mm. I like it. All right, answers are starting to roll in. Jubaijia guessing uh, one, Cindy and Fernanda following suit. So when you see the screen roll over here, folks, you still got some time. However, time is a wasting. Don't wait too long. Oh, I see a daring, uh, bold guess for two, leaf shape. And yes, by, by and large, everyone's guessing one. And not a common way to name tea. I picked this one based on, oh, Max <laughs> Most people said no, said three. Right. And uh, yeah, just about everybody got it right. Way to go, guys. Uh, you're right. Root structure is not a common way to name tea. The other three are, I maybe shouldn't have put the word common. They are ways that teas are named. Maybe roots to market. You don't see that much, but you do see it. We'll get into that. I think my, my question was a little bit misleading with the word common thrown in there. I'll try to be better next Stress time. Stress with the ticker. Stress, right? <laughs> All right, guys. An outstanding tea usually takes its name from one, the maker, two, a place, three, the corresponding legend, or four, a monastery. What do you think of the tea? I love this. I just, I picked white tea today because I we have a nice warm spring day and we're, this is, um, is this Guangdong? Is this mm -hmm. from Guangdong? This is a Guangdong yeah. white tea. Yu Guangbai. Yu Guangbai. It uses the Yunnan Yu Guangbai style process, but it's uh, not uh, for um, or the uh, Dali Cha culture. Well, yeah, 
Anyway, it's got um, that white tea sweetness with a little bit more, like a little bit of almost buttery hay kind of thing. But I gotta get back to the question. The answer's about to roll in. So I took these questions kind of from our upcoming section. So if you read ahead, you might have an advantage. <laughs> uh, so lots of guesses for two, a place, Jubaijia, the corresponding legend, and um, a few guesses for that. And the answer is, hey, way to go everybody who got it right and everybody who guessed, thank you for guessing. Um, none of those are really uh, wrong because some of them do indeed take their names from um, those first three that you all guessed, but the famous ones often take their name from a place according to the, the uh, document we're going over. And I don't think it will take your answer unless you enter a number. Yes, and I've even seen it take the number when it's with some words, but yeah, generally you want to put uh, the number. Thanks for letting us, letting him know, Cindy. All right, which of the following is true? One, teas are clearly named and categorized globally. Two, only Chinese teas need careful categorization. Three, sometimes the same tea goes by many different names and other times a single name. Spelled wrong, I missed the E. Four, categorizing tea is very simple. Which of the following is true? And Ben's got the right idea. He's not playing to win, he's playing for fun, which is great. Oh boy, this is really smooth. I think you did a great job brewing this given the amount of leaf. My tea is a slow brewing tea. Mm. If you're used to like a, a oolong speed. The combination, yeah, <laughs> if you're used to. Hey, way to go. Oh, we got a total win oh. there. Yeah. Yeah. Knocked it out of the top guys with uh, everyone getting the uh, right answer. Good job. I'm just loving the combination of sweetness in this tea along with the sort of more grounded notes of almost like hay, but fresh. It's a really comfy, warm, sweet, huh? gentle, really It goes gentle. with the weather I was trying to say earlier, but I was rushed. All right, I gotta address this <laughs> next question. Which tea is the namesake of the oolong tea category? Ooh, is it one, Taeguan Yin, two, Da Hong Pao, three, Ai Jiao, or four, Wudong Dan Song? We talked a little bit about this last week, how the differences between our... The, this is tricky. This is a bit of a tricky one, yeah. We did mention it, that's why I'm kind of giving some hints that we talked about it last week vis-a-vis -vis, um, Chen Chuan's uh, desire for the name to be blue tea for the oolong category, but he says that oolong is, you know, it's a type of tea. So which one was it? <laughs> nice that's a nice that's... series of emojis. Yeah, that's great. Question mark, teapot, teacup. Way to go. So we got some guesses coming in for Da Hong Pao, good one. Igor throwing down Tae Guan Yin. Ben also throwing down Da Hong Pao, Tae Guan Yin and Da Hong Pao, way in the lead. Lolo throws down a Wudong. Oh, Ooh. and I stumped the crowd with this one. Where is it? <laughs> good guesses though, way to go guys. Good that you all took a guess. I think that's the important thing, we're just having fun. Hence the sound effects. That sound effect just should be replaced by the screaming goat. It really has <laughs> that essence. I should totally get the screaming goat. Blue Long time signature reminds us of his <laughs> favorite name for Oolong. Yes. Blue Long. All right, guys, we are down to the wire here. If you are thirsty and you find yourself in a tea garden with nothing else to drink, a good option, I embellished the question a little bit, a good option is to one, drink from a puddle, Two, just go thirsty. Three, lay down under a bush. Or four, eat a fresh tea leaf. <laughs> Jubajia yells dive, because that's a, kind of the sound of the, sub, the old submarine, Auga. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I love seeing this comment. This was very teacher-like. I guess we're not paying attention last week. <laughs> 
I'm not sure if I full out said it. I think I might have. I don't know if I said it. So it's a little bit of a... It's not a full out last week. Just we mentioned a little bit. You also have to know the cultivar name kind of mm, thing. It's a bit tricky. Yeah, All right. Yeah. We've got lots of our guesses for uh, four, a guess for three, which is a nice one. Have a little rest <laughs> under a bush. Oh, uh, yeah. Always second guess myself. No, uh, Josh is second guessing himself, but goes with eat a fresh leaf. And way to go, everybody. Almost everybody got that one right with eat a fresh leaf. In a few moments, the uh, magical computer will tally up your answers and show us a little bit of a leaderboard, a few answers flying in just under the wire. Maybe they got captured. I don't know how much the lag is, is uh, in the chat is playing in here, but here we are, guys. Here's what the computer came up with for a scoreboard. Cindy coming out on top with four correct answers, tied with time signature and low low, so I guess her spot was arbitrary. And look at all the people with three correct answers, just about everybody. Jubaijia, Simrajit, Josh, Fernanda, Ben, Igor, and Max. Way to go, everybody. Oh, great job. Let me tell you something. As you know, you are all winners in my book, uh, just for participating, just for being here to hang out and have tea with us. We love it. So mm. thank you for playing and participating in uh, tea trivia time during episode 38 of Sunday Tea Whoa, Book. Whoa, 38. Right? You can do that, okay? I just mentioned that once and Mr. Sensitive is now like saying... Oh, sorry. I hid her phone over here. <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to use my phone for the Chinese version, okay? Right on. And I have got... I've changed things up a little bit, kind of gone back to the old display just for the ease of uh, having flexibility with the display. So we are going to dive into uh, this week's uh, this week's chapter, section, section, I think works I'm better. I'm very excited for this week's um, content because uh, it's, uh, it's so shares the uh, situation with the Chinese market. A lot of things people might mm. not think of because we hear some famous teas and and there's a, anyway, let's just dive in. But I think it will be very interesting and uh, you guys probably will feel a lot of uh, yeah. re so, resonate with uh, some of the content. So just as a reminder, if you want to um, read along, your best bet is going to be to not rely on the screen, but to go down into the link in the descriptions below mm. and grab up the, uh, the document that's right there. The link will take you right to it. Uh, I think it's a straight up link. There's no registration or anything. You no. just go and see it. You'll get a PDF. You can right. even download it if you want to yes. uh, have it for next time. Just grab that. So that'll be handier because we might be flipping in and out of this screen quite a bit, especially based on my technical abilities. <laughs> <laughs> and the sound effect. Right. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have sound effects for this yeah. screen. I might have to add some. So as mentioned, we're not going to read that uh, um, word by word because you guys can read that before, during or after the live. So I'm just going to quickly summarize what is this uh, section about. It's talk about the tea naming. Basically, it's the fundament, the very fundamental thing before we dive into the real categorizing. Because if mm. one tea has 10 names, which one do you use? Like when you do a little bit of um, research and studies, you have to make sure each tea have only one name to represent it. Yeah, so absolutely. that when you mention it, it's not confusing. And also you don't want a bunch of tea sharing the same name. Mm -hmm. Then it's another confusion. Yep. And in t this session, it for, uh, Professor Chen Chuan first uh, summarized the kind of the, um, the situation in China. How are most Chinese tea named? Uh, I also wrote a blog post quite a while ago to summarize mm. too in terms of uh, explain why we don't use English one as well as explain what right. are the basics about Chinese tea names. So when right. you see a tea, you roughly know uh, what they are. Yeah, why we do, the blog post goes into why we don't translate the, the names from uh, Chinese. We just stick with them even though we use the pinyin. Right, and um, what are yeah. the rules in general about the Chinese naming? So here he mentioned, uh, he has a... He really goes into it into every detail with yeah. a lot of great examples, a lot of teas that you don't uh, see much on the market. 
nowadays. Mm. So, uh, yes. you know, Chinese way of naming teas, it could be location, it could be the look of the leaves, the taste of the leaves, uh, a mm -hmm. lot of uh, examples. And it, especially at the end of this session, he concludes one interesting thing, which is very common in China, is a, it's a tea name is chaotic. Mm. Even till today, it's still very chaotic. In his time, it's chaotic because everybody could have their own name, even though they're talking about the same thing. Yes. Every, yeah. Yeah, so and one of the things that, that this section really helped me, um, one of the things that this section really helped me figure out or helped remind me of, I was just about to point out my second bit here. <laughs> oh, okay. Is, um, um, is um, when he says in this section down here, let me just do a little highlight so you know where I'm looking. Down here at the Bai Hao Yin Zhen, the first part is the category. So he's talking about Bai Hao Yin Zhen and the first part of the name, Bai Hao, is the category. So when I first read that, I was thinking, oh, white tea, because Bai, he must just mean the Bai is white of white tea. But you gotta, whoa, whoa, you gotta kind of shake off. You, we, we're sitting in the paradigm of the six categories being sort of the way to name T. This paper is not written in that time. So Bai Hao is actually a category back in the, like, it, it's a kind. Uh, so that threw no, me off. I think off. the thing to say more, mm. uh, just to help you, uh, yeah. is, I don't think a category is nowadays we think it's so much about 6T category of a black and white and stuff like that, but there are other ways. I don't it's think, also I agree, but I think a lot of people overlook that. I certainly do, like, but there's many ways to categorize tea, right? Like season of pluck. Mm -hmm. um, there's more than just the six categories, but I tend to get into this sort of blinders on, lockdown way of thinking the six categories are the six categories of tea. Period. End of story. But that's not correct. As you'll learn if you check out some of our other videos about it, there's plenty of ways to categorize tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the introduction of this system didn't eliminate those. Mm -hmm. Great. Now we go back here. <sighs> right, so, um, oh, I wanted to point out another thing here. Okay. Sorry, I'll just go to this route so we don't have that. <laughs> Commercial time. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> ah, technical difficulty. I'm trying to press buttons a little too fast. Let me try to get back over here. I also wanted to, in the first paragraph, there was another part that I really, and again, Jen alluded mm. to this. Uh, Jen alluded to this, but the, one of the reasons we don't translate the names is something he states here, and that is that the T names are descriptive and have an elegance that's unmatched by other commodities mm -hmm. and uh, I really couldn't um, agree more. The section goes on to name a bunch of teas in, and as you pointed out in the Chinese version, as he's going through the names of the teas and how chaotic it is, the names are beautiful, they're stunning. And as you read through this text, you'll see that the names are clunky and almost comedic. And the elegance is totally lost. Um, let me just show you some examples quickly. Um, Hair peak, right? That's that's not elegant. Uh, melon slice, right? It's just a, it's a disaster. So uh, I really think Guapian or Mao Feng, like just as is, as with Japanese tea, and a lot of other sort of cultural crossover foods or beverages, they maintain their name, and I find it's really it's really funny that a lot of Chinese tea is it gets this attempt at translation, which which really butchers that elegance, that poetry. Mm -hmm. of the name. So let's see, uh, there's some comments here. You want to pop out for a little, mm -hmm. a little yes. comment check? Yes. <clears throat> so time signature, where were we now? I assume it's pesticide-free tea garden. Oh, for the uh, thirstiness, it is absolutely a <laughs> pesticide-free tea garden. That's, and Ben says, uh, it's the pesticides that are quenching, lol. <laughs> Good one. Simmerjeet likes my shirt. Da -da -da -da. Thank you. And uh, I, Time Signature says, I didn't expect these live streams to be as linguistically interesting as they are. Plus one for language and linguistics. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of that. I hope it's, I'm not sure if it's uh, my bad grammar he's commenting about or just that they're so funny. There's so much interesting language for real. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I'm just kidding. My grammar's not so bad, is it? Cindy says, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't think I... your grammar is so bad as it's on here. I love that you use the Chinese names on your site. It gets confusing with some other sites that give their teas arbitrary names. Ah, that's another great reason why we stick with the Chinese names uh, just for that reason, because they do contain embedded information about the tea you're, you're trying to buy. So it's really important to know that. I am up for, tr I am up for t trying a tea named Chaotic. <laughs> Chao Tea C. Chaotic. Nice one. Mm. Time signature, keeping things a, ling yeah, linguistically really fascinating. Cool. Yes, Ben Moore says yes. And Fernanda, Indian categorization is interesting, indeed. Mm. Mm. And time signature says, hey, did you play that bass yourself? Uh, I, yes, actually, I did. That one is... <laughs> What's the hesitation? Okay, the hesitation is that in the intro music, I didn't play bass, it was a synthesized bass, a synth bass, which I still played. But in that little, when I went back to the intro music by accident, that was mm -hmm. real bass with real Gujen. I also played the Gujen in the little clip. So thank you for asking. And Ben says, I'm still not convinced yellow tea is not a green tea. I saw this Sunday book club about it. Yada, yada, but come on, the category boundary is too arbitrary. So what if it's a little more oxidized? Mm, that's an interesting point. That's a really good question. And that question, hopefully by the end of this whole reading, mm. you will tell me. <laughs> because this is kind of like mm. what we talk about uh, because a lot of times we just simplify the tea process as a, a level of oxidation or the process and stuff but in real life there is no green tea is not oxidized so that is wrong ever since it's a plug it starts <coughs> bless you <I'm> <laughs> i shut my mic off so hopefully nobody got deafened did you get that back on it's back on now okay, yeah cool Whew. Anyway, excuse me, so guys. That's a great, great question, and that's one of the mm. questions that I receive a lot when mm. people talk about the tea and the tea types, and that's uh, the major reason I wanted to read this article with people. And um, I think you will find cool. a, a satisfying answer by the end. Ah, so okay. And it is the real stuff that's interesting. Mm. It's the naming, the transliteration, the translation. Um, Kenny Lee would be proud, yeah. Thank you. Wow, that's a big compliment. Bass player from Rush. Ooh. Yeah. Rush. So let's start a tea themed band. Hmm. Stick with that thought. Well, that's really good. And Fernanda says, bless me. Thank you, Fernanda. Okay. So uh, continue on the part a little bit. I think in general, the whole section has uh, doesn't have much of a, like a, a major like mistake or anything like that. But uh, to uh, just to give you guys a little bit of reference in terms of lots of T names and some uh, information to kind of update since this is an article since uh, uh, the late uh, late seventies. Okay. Oh, I wanted to just. Mm -hmm. I know I've said it before, but when you point out that the, the paper was written in the 70s and that's where the six T categories really came out of this paper, mm -hmm. I also think that's pretty fascinating and little known. I don't know about you guys out there, but when I first started to get into Chinese tea because of the ceremony and the sort of maybe the mystical or foreign nature, how it's all prepared so differently than what we're used to, my tendency is to think it all must be centuries old and you you know you see chinese shows where they're in the old ancient the old funny hairdos and the funny robes and they're having tea and you think these things are ancient ceremonies mm. and the tea must all be ancient but it's it's not all as old as you think right mm. so in the pair uh, in the this section as mentioned uh, from last week a lot of times when you see brown teas it actually means the yellow teas right for example head over here yes please mm. Mm. so i really love how the the the, the yeah, translator he even put the paragraph in, in english style so I was going to say in paragraph three, then I was like, no, they're different. <laughs> they're mm -hmm. not in the same kind of... A, right. Uh, the, he really break the sentence into English speaking, like besides grammar and stuff. Yeah, and the, also even the ideas the, are... I, I, and yeah. Like the logic yeah. of a paragraph is mm -hmm. really nice. So talking about the, uh, the taste, the dry leaves of the leaves. 
毛峰黄牙。Uh -huh. So we talk about a、uh, 黄牙 here. Yeah. The brown bud is 黄牙 right? Just want to point that out.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, in the next paragraph, it talk about、um, also、uh, 寿州 brown bud. Here we go. Yes. Uh, this is the Huashan. Nowadays, the Huashan Huangya. Shouzhou is the old ancient name of、uh, Huashan area. They produce the、uh, yellow tea,、uh, Huangya. So it dates back to Han Dynasty, which is around 200 BC. But even though the identical character was there, it doesn't mean that they are identical to the Huashan Huangya we're seeing today. Right. And、uh, then you see the Guzhu purple shoot.、Mm. Of the Song era are two famous teas of many that have now passed into history.、Right. But as we all know, there are still Guzhu Zisun and、uh, Huashan Huangya. So,、uh, an interesting I wanted to point out is a lot of historical tea or a lot of teas we're familiar nowadays. They all, a lot of them have a history of non-existing for a bit, become a history tea. So, for example, Guzhu Zisun. Was this whole process was revived in the seventies as well? So our、mm. like producer Wu Jian,、uh, Mr. Wu Jianhua, is the key person、uh, to bring back the Guzhu Zisun process,、mm. and that's what you when you、uh, try our Guzhu Zisun, that's、uh, from him. So.、Uh, Your mom's favorite tea garden, I believe. Yes, my mom's a favorite tea garden. So a little story about that tea garden is,、um, and why it's Jianli's favorite tea garden, is、um, it's a wild tea garden, and I put little air quotes up because it was historically an、um, an empirical an imperial garden.、Uh, so it was a proper tended garden at one point in time in the、mm. distant past, and then the palace was abandoned for whatever reason. And the garden was left to just go sort of feral. I love that word to describe these sorts of wild gardens because、mm -hmm. they were domestic and then they've gone wild. They've self-seeded for decades, even centuries,、mm. and it just makes this sort of beautiful、um, mm. space. Where, and it's very、mm. interesting to listen to these uh, uh, old generation of uh, uh, tea people talking about the. The, the their experience when they were young when they were working there, like、uh, Mr. Wu Jianhua, he was a,、uh, uh, you know, the, he used to be like a,、uh, uh, every year he was in the 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 tea factory waiting for the farmers to send out their teas and he could look at just the fresh tea leaf knows is this from the mountain is this from like in the, the mini region right right is this pluck on the mountain is this pluck on the plant. Right. He can just tell, and he was like some farmers trying to trick me and say, "How did you know?" He was like, "He was like, I'm staying here every day till two, three a.m. buying all those leaves. How can I not know?" Right. It's very cool, and、uh, it, it's one of those things that if you just see it happen and you you think, "Oh, this guy's magical." Yes. But it actually is. You is, just have to see it enough to see they they those、mm. green leaves looks. Different. Yeah, it's kind of the ten thousand hour principle. This guy's staring、yeah. at leaf for you know hours and hours a day. He knows what they look like. You cannot trick him. Yeah, <laughs> and I remember he was mentioning about like when he was young. He is now like retired for many years, like in his uh uh sixties, seventies. He was saying that in his thirties, when he was doing researchers and logging the. The teas in the regions that he talked to those old people at that time was in their nineties, and they were like trees, tea trees are like almost three meters high, super tall because they were wild. Nobody was taking care right, of it. Right, right. And you know, it's in Zhejiang Province, which is a, a like really populated area, right? right. Like the east coast is really populated, but there is that zone that is kind of wild, and.、Um, But then they got it chopped off because people didn't care much and just burn、right. as a, as a wood,、Ouch. you know, firewood.、Mm. So now it's much shorter. But old times, the people have to like、uh, find、uh, ladders and stuff to pluck those teas, quite、mm. precious as well. Wow! And that's from that ninety-year-old、uh, person's <sighs> memory. Right. Anyway, and so he did. He actually did research. Yeah, in, because in、uh, at that、mm. time when they.、Uh, 
in the uh, the early times when you know the the uh, P C R C P R no P P R C P R C P R C <laughs> no hard no with... hard problems here. <laughs> yes, I'm not good with those uh, short things. Um, acronyms. Acronyms. Mm. Yes, I sometimes get U P S and U B S mixed up. U S B. A U S B. See. Uh. <laughs> anyways, so uh. Uh, they have to know each region have their T Institute, T mm. Research and Study mm. Institute to work with the farmers to know what they're doing and work with the locals to really know or where are tea farms logging it, what's the situation. So wow. that's why he has to go to almost every little region wow. in the uh, Guzhu area. So just a little story about that. Mm-hmm. And mentioning that uh, Huo Shan Huangya and uh, Guzhu Zisun now are, and back. somebody uh, somebody commented. I saw it in the comments below. They had a little laugh about the green snail, <laughs> which is fair, which is fair. On that note, let's just see what's. Uh, I saw lots of comments shooting by. Okay. Um, oh wow, we went right off the screen here. Oh. Right, Ben is still um, still not digging the yellow tea vibe, which okay. is cool. We're gonna mm-hmm. get there. We're gonna get there. Just uh-huh. stick with us over the next few weeks. It's all naming and translation stuff. Yes, that's linguistically interesting. Right. Kelly Lee would be proud. Ben says, oh, okay. "Yeah, so many different levels in oolong, yet they're all oolong." But I doesn't. So stick with us for that. Yes. Uh, vis-a-vis the yellow tea. And Time Signature says regarding clunky translations, some of the English names are kind of cool though, like Dragon Wall, yes, mm-hmm. and Silver Needle. Not bad, mm-hmm. not bad. You're right. It's just a few. Uh, lots of them are a bit like, uh, ugh, like cringeworthy. You know, like Green Snail. It could perhaps. be just you're used to it at a certain point, like a, mm. a Green Snail. You might well, well, that's a rare species. Yeah, and especially I, like a Dragon Wall, like a Silver Needle. For me, at least that kind of something. Like remotely makes sense, right? Needle, right. silver needle. Okay, right, I get right. it. It might be a shiny needle or something like a dragon well. What does that make any sense in English? Right. It's maybe because of that we have been heard for so many years. It could be. It does sound think, like like as a place you can picture a well with maybe some dragon statues around it too. <laughs> but I think the right. um the other thing about the elegance that's hard to grasp is is as for me as a non Chinese speaker. And uh, even if I spoke Chinese, I'm not sure that I would get the the elegance to which Chen Chuan is talking about. Because as a native Chinese, he really appreciates sort of like how we're appreciating some of the linguistic interesting stuff here in English. He appreciates sort of the nature of those names, like how metaphoric they are and how evocative they are of the actual tea in question. Um, I think. Maybe. I totally agree because the feeling is here. Uh, uh, though I'm not an expert in English, but having been living here and speaking English for quite a while, I kind of have a rough idea how I feel when I read a certain paragraph. Mm. Like when I read this section, I feel funny, Englishly funny, because there's like you said, a green snail, uh, you know, and uh, what like a, a pine needle. Uh, melon slice, like those uh, rain flower is like, uh, it sounds like a kid stuff, <laughs> you know, like a hair really tip. hair tip, like a really low end. I have heard eyebrow naming. used in some naming too, where there's May, yes. you know, like, uh, it's like, how, how does eyebrow work its way into my teacup? It's generally not appetizing. It just doesn't feel like that. <laughs> but in Chinese, that's how it express. Like uh, mm. you don't say things as ex- exactly, we use a metaphor, right? Mm. Like here, they meant uh, layer or yeah. Oh, let Can me just show that? show that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like a spring bud. Spring bud. Right. Like a rain flower. Right, right. So what it describes is actually, as a Chinese, when I read it, it's very visual. It's mm. when the spring, when the flowers are dropping. That's the moment or kind of thing. Ah. Oh, you know? So right. it's very beautiful when I read that in yeah. Chinese. Again, in English, doesn't have that feeling. No, I thought it was about the weather, not about the end of spring when the buds start to drop off the trees and create that almost rain of flower petals. Right, and mm. also then they have, uh, like we know Ming Qian, right? I think it's uh, here, Ming Qian. Mm-hmm. 
then it talks before the rains, right. which means the uh, 雨前 before uh, 谷雨 That's another、uh, solo term.、Mm -hmm. Then spring buds. It's actually called a spring. What's the pollen part of the flower? Oh right, the、uh, kind of like the stamen or yeah, the yeah, it's a very tender pistil,、one. I believe. It really、I、gives the you the feeling. It's even more tender than the petal. It is the very inner side of the flower. It's not just a bud. It's actually right. Yes, a trunry. Then you have that.、Uh, you rather than call that autumn tea, you call that autumn fragrance.、Mm. Qiu xiang. It has a little metaphoric term, like、uh, really a translation. No matter how accurate it is, it. Just culturally, it doesn't work in that way,、mm. and yeah, right. And as this mentioned, like we think of Ming Tian, Yu Tian, those are old terms. Those are actually not as old. The even older term in front of it, it was talking about, and the、oh. translation here is not as good. Oh,、here. sorry. It calls a seeking spring, Tan Chun, second spring, Ci Chun. That's a、uh, uh, it's not、uh, ideal in terms of translation. Si doesn't have to be、uh, second, but that's、uh, when Ming Dynasty when the、uh, cake tea got abandoned. The emperor said, "Okay, let's abandon all the cake tea. Let's do loose leaf. All I want is Tan Chun, Si Chun, Xian Chun, and Zi Chun, four loose leaf teas. So those are ancient famous teas.、Mm. So was Zi Chun in there? Yeah." Nice for four of them, but in terms of、uh, because it has the word、uh, "chun spring" in it, so people think it has to mean meaning different time in the spring, not literally like that. It could also、mm -hmm. mean the different plucking standard of the leaf. Right.、Uh, right now, there's a、uh, some debate because of the limited test and information about exactly what they mean. Right. Yeah. So、um, <laughs> I feel a little bit bad for Cindy, but I can、What? totally relate to her、um, situation. She said she got so involved in the conversation that she overbrewed her first steep of Bai Mudan, but amazing recovery on the second steep. I do that all the time because <laughs> sometimes I brew, then I talk. <laughs> and Time Signature says that if we start a tea band, it should be a death me me teal band, which works in spelling but less in、There's、speaking.、Oh. Death metal band. Is death which, metal hair metal? No, 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 no. We're we're sort of leaning towards hair metal. We love those anthemic melodies and those、um, those riffing guitar choruses. Death metal usually has that really nasty voice that comes、oh. over it, but sometimes does feature those powerful guitar riffs too. Okay. Back to T. <laughs> uh, and uh, Ben loves how he's on fire with the T ones. Kelsey is from Hawaii. Always misses the live chat. Love you guys. Thank you for joining us, Kelsey. I hope you're still there to to hear our thanks. But really nice. Of, I don't know if you've just been able to drop in. I don't know what time it is in Hawaii. I think it's、uh, is that more. It's quite、um, early in the morning, I suspect. So a、uh, couple of more hours than Vancouver, probably. Yes, even yeah.、Mm -hmm. So three. That's three hours. So four, probably five? five hours earlier. Nice and bright and early in the morning there. I think. I, they're not over the dateline because they're part of the U.S. Pretty sure about that. Not one hundred percent. I don't know. Cindy says, "Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't mind names like Dragonwell. You, of course, you're not wrong. You can like whatever you like, Dragonwell and Silverneedle, as those are just translations of the Chinese names, right?、Um, and that's right. They are translations of yes, the Chinese names. Yes, literal translations.、Right? Literal translations.、Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I've been thinking about what you said. And is it because we've just heard them so long that we've adapted to them? Would I eventually like Green Snail as a name?" I think it's just they they linguistically work, work? better. Yeah, like、okay. Dragonwell sounds cool. Silver Needle, like you said, at least it means something.、Um, green Snail is not something I probably want to picture while I'm sipping tea. <laughs> Too raw to eat. Right, but um, <laughs> but something like green tea or you know, it's just like words that go together. Like、um, some of them work and some of them don't. At a certain point, you know, it's language. It's a living thing, right? It's、yeah. not like you have to go this way by this expert or something. Like people throughout years, we sort things out. Yeah. You know, like a because some people are suggesting, oh, let's don't say black tea. Let's have to say red tea or or hong cha or stuff. Like um. It's a good、uh, suggestions and stuff, and it's a kind of a supposedly we're supposed to be on for that, but I don't know because black tea is so deeply rooted as the, you know, black tea is really hard, and I think throughout time people, like you know, will eventually make their 
choices as right. a group, not as a single person. Right. Right. A certain name will be washed off. Washed off. I mean, will, will, will fall into disuse. Right. Mm. Jubai Jia says something really interesting, and uh, I don't want to do any spoilers, but right. he says, I wish the pinyin titles would include the diacritics for the tones. What's diacritics? It, uh, the accents, the ah, tones. Okay. It helps a little as Mandarin has too many homophones. State, What's a homophone? Uh, I wish you wouldn't have asked that. Oh, sorry. But it, same sound, uh, same sound, different meanings, or same. Ah. Okay, I think okay. that that kind um, of just yeah that kind of just so stay that, tuned with right we, we got an emergency video for not just you but many for, people but actually it's besides a really you there are question. more pe uh, other people suggesting that and I want to answer that in a more detailed explanation mm. so uh, yes stay no tuned stay tuned this week I think okay. oh and that was a big flip Wait, okay 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 oh boy. Sorry, I just had a little um, loss where I was. Here we yeah. go. So, and then Ben says to Cindy, are you on the English translation of Chinese names? That is helpful. I am with you. Yeah. Agreed. Hmm. Everybody seems to love them. Mm -hmm. At least those two. Those are really yeah. two common favorite. Yes. An empirical, oh, and I made a little slip of the tongue. I said an empirical garden and then imperial garden after. <laughs> but I said an empirical garden first. Must have been very scientifically managed. And yes, <laughs> one would imagine it was. I didn't even notice. And then Time Signature has a question. Are there named subcategories of oolong based on the level of oxidation? Might be helpful to oolong noobs. Newbies, he said, not noobs. Uh, the, there are common ways. Most of e uh, not easy, just a very commonly used like a green oolong or dark oolong that I heard a lot. Oh, sorry about that. Here. <clears throat> yes. In yeah, those are sort of informal, <coughs> informal ones that have come into use because people are looking for like, hey, which spectrum is it in? Mm. Which is totally reasonable. And again, comes to your point about the uh, the aliveness, the vitality of the of language. Mm. And Josh says, ha, Phil, that's exactly what I always pictured when I heard the term before I was learning about tea. Oh, I can't remember what I said. Like a huge ornate dragon statue. Yeah, behind as a protector over an ancient natural well. Yeah, that's kind of what I picture too. It sounds really mm. badass. Ben says, I wonder if there was a mixing and matching going on at some point, like red clay for black tea or purple. Oh, I, I, missed, a, I missed Ben's question. Sorry, Ben. Has there ever been a correlation between tea type colors and preferred colors for tea wear historically? And, and then he goes on to say, I wonder if there was mixing and matching going on, like red clay for black tea or purple or yellow clay or etc. No. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's a straight up no. No. Nope. Uh, Doesn't mean we can't start that now. Yeah, you can do that however you like it, but it wasn't... Uh, uh, it wasn't uh, developed like that. It wasn't a thing, yeah. Mm, yeah. And then Jubai Ji says maybe the Mei the Hua. only thing. Sorry, I was just thinking. I, if oh. I can add more, yeah, I yeah, will please. try to you know mm. talk more. But the only thing I could think of is, for example, uh, tea wear, like in re like uh, how Jian Zhan. If you guys like uh, teacups and stuff, you know the Song Dynasty they use that. And you look at all the Jian Zhan teacups; they're all dark color, no matter what. Besides the technology issue at that time. It's because the Song people uh, also whisk, right? And mm. the top skilled whisk uh, tea drinker whisk the foam white. So you need a contrast ah. there. That's why those are uh, so dark. And we can use that for our own enjoyment in regular time, like uh, nowadays. But you notice if you use those cups, you cannot see the tea liquor. The liquor clear. color, which is it now what we that, care about. Yeah, so mm. it seems doesn't work. Why was that so, so uh, popular at that time? Because we drink tea differently. Mm. And the same reason as we started to drink more loose tea, less of the whip, less of that white foam on top. Um, after Ming Dynasty, the uh, porcelain, the other, uh, like uh, uh, later on, is ah. the, uh, sorry, the Yixin teapot uh, start to be more trendy. But this kind of a white is perfect for observing this kind of a clear liquor. Right. So that's the only thing that could, uh, in the color sense, where the color influenced the preparation techniques. Yes. And of course, there's also technology uh, possibilities right. to produce this kind of a white, pure white uh, porcelain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And Shubaijia says, maybe the Meihua bird, Phil, when you are referring to Mei for eyebrow. Meihua bird? Mm. Yeah, I've heard it in all kinds of teas, even Jinjun Mei, golden horse eyebrow or something. I've heard really funny translations that again yeah, are, just, are just kind the, of... The interesting thing with the translation is uh, uh, Longjing is relatively simple. Mm. And not as many meanings. Lots of translations are really off in the meanings. They right. translate wrong characters or stuff like that. Right on. Jinju yeah. is eyebrow. That's just wrong. Right. Um, yes, exactly. But it, we've heard it. It's just kind of. Right. And there was a statement is really. Mm. Yeah. Second spring. Uh, Lolo says second spring with my cultural background means you get old and fall in love again. Oh, oh, that's so oh, yes, pretty. Yes, we say that too. The mm. Archon, second Archon? spring. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's so cute. And uh, time signature is like us. He likes all sorts of metal. Mm. Especially like me. I'm, I'm sort of uh, very musically flexible. I bet you are too. You seem like probably go even beyond metal. Let me know if you're into like all kinds of music because I'm kind of not so all over the place. Jazz, classical, metal, name it. Um, electronica. Um, Josh prefers metalcore. Eh, not bad. Not What's bad. What's metalcore? Uh, maybe Josh can tell us some bands, but I'm thinking like, uh, uh, who was that? There was. I might be really dating myself here, but uh, anyway, it's like modern. It's metal with a bit of rap. It's got some heavy guitar. It usually has a screaming guy and then a melodic voiced guy. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit formulaic and almost like pop metal to me, but I don't want it. I'm not in, you know, it's okay. I like a lot of it too. It's got lots of it has a really good groove. Anyway, back to tea. Uh, hua mei, not mei hua. Mm, mm, okay. Mm. It's the thing we eat, I think. If it's a hua mei, it's that super tart stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh, right on. Oh, I thought it was huang mei, hua mei. Hua mei. Ah, right? okay, okay. I got a little bit. Anyway. I got a little bit, uh, too far. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There we go. I'm back. I'm back. Actually, green. I mean, I actually think green snail is a really super cute name. I never imagined yeah. anything bad. Almost a cartoon green snail shell, but that's because I saw the shape of the T before the name. I mean, it's so cute and tiny and little green spirals. Mm, yeah, it's not. It's not too off in terms of the shape of the T. That's for sure. <laughs> Oh, everybody likes green snail. All I can picture because I had my first experience with escargot before I saw the tea. So all I can think of is escargot, the uh, edible snails. Homophone is like witch and witch. Mm, same sound, but different words. Yes. Ah, okay. And I've been listening, uh, time singer, I've been listening a lot to ne Nemophila and Bandmaid lately w while drinking tea, of course. Yes. Yes, I, we even did a tea, a tea, Aussie tea tune. I stole Aussie's tune and did the, uh, did the crazy, uh, oolong, crazy train. oolong train. The other day when I was, uh, so when fun. we were in the garden and uh, the crazy train started and we were like so excited. It felt yes. like as if it's our train. Yes, yes. <laughs> ben says, thanks for answering the questions. That's what we're here for. We love the questions. Thank you guys for asking them. Cindy, I think the issue is more with homographs in Chinese words, that words that are spelled the same but have totally different meanings. Yeah, it's really interesting. When you throw pinyin into the mix, I really recommend you gotta stay tuned for that video. It's gonna shed a lot of light on that whole confusing situation. And Jubai Jia says, the song used to have whisking races to see who made the foam last the longest. Ah, yo, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll come back to the hair metal bands later. I just want to get back to the document and see if there's any more questions, a little funny right. names. I don't know. Uh, let's filter this out without you, but oh, duck shit is a popular den song. It's delicious. Yeah. Hopefully YouTube didn't filter that out, but, um, yeah, duck shit tea is a really fun and hilarious name that was given by the farmers and now is kind of disappearing officially, but everybody wants to keep it because everybody loves it so much. It is a really fun name. But that wasn't overly um, poetic or anything in Chinese, right? No, that's that was... why China, the Chinese are eager to change it because it's too... Coarse. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys love how funky it is. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't quite match the uh, exactly what Chen Chuan is talking about, the elegance of the name. This is sort of like a... Uh, a... That's actually good. I just want to... Actually, because this section is relatively uh, not very complex, 
The good thing, what I really love is、uh, this section give you guys a little、uh, insight about his tea knowledge, not just knowledge like on the book, but all those names. Not not a lot of them are still.、Uh, I mean. You probably In, won't see them nowadays. Right, right. They they would be considered rare、yes. teas. Old times, so those real tea experts and masters, they not only do well in schools, academic layers. They also really goes on size. And、mm. at that time, the condition there is just pure horrible. They would be there. They know what the farmers are saying. They know everything. All、mm. those examples. It's a, just a little sneak peek about this, like. Knowledge and some of them are not official names. Some of them are colloquial, colloquial names.、Mm, oh, well done. Thank you. And in the last paragraph, the in、uh, the interesting and important things is that phenomenon still happens today. Sometimes people ask me,、uh, "What is mouth phone?" Like I have a mouth phone. What is this T? And they didn't like show me any pictures or anything. And just because、uh, mm. it's a mouth phone, I'm supposed to <laughs> know that. But it's not like that. The name is not so locked, you know. You could have a mouth phone meaning Huang Shan mouth phone.、Mm. You also could have a lot of a, a local farmers. They call whatever their green tea, anything that is not their, their top green tea, they call that mouth phone. Right. And that's used across China. Right. So you can. And it's. Heat, I just、okay. want to throw in that that gets further、um, sort of. It's made even more confusing because a lot of people who source tea, like like the sort of model,、uh, oftentimes is uh, 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 people just they head over to China and they're just into tea so much they go over there they drop themselves into the tea region they meet with、um, guard、uh, producers and gardeners and farmers and they bring the tea back and that's how that how it was named Mao Feng. So they name it. They have a great story, and if you're new into tea, they're the they're now the authority because they traveled there. But they're just passing on, and it's not to say it's wrong. It's just it's not clear. It's, it's not clear. So、it's、if、muddy. you have any question for me, I always say pri- first at least ask your、mm-hmm. uh, vendor like where is this from. All those questions,、mm-hmm. I don't really know. With just you tell me it's a mouthful, I don't really know. It could be from anywhere, and when I talk about、uh, like、um, sourcing teas, I always recommend people learn first before you go to the area to learn. Don't go、mm. to tea region to learn. There、oh, will、yeah. be lots of things that you don't even knew what. Yeah, yeah. You could get end up, and they.、Uh, Let's plug the video. No, the blog post. You have a great blog post about that. Actually, oh, yeah, yeah. so I'm gonna plug that. I will put it in. The, it's not in the links down below yet, but when we when we repost on Monday or Tuesday, as we said we would do, I'll put that link down there. That is a great blog post. If you're one of those people who does want to source tea, you wrote a great like sort of top five tips or something. I think it's exactly that: how to source tea, which will be very valuable for those of you interested in that kind of thing.、Mm. So last bit of this thing. Nice. This session is this.、Right. It feels like ah, what happened? No worries. Okay. Just I want to say the last line that says the popular term must be replaced.、Um, it can be. It's not quite right. It's not the popular one. It's the one, the colloquial one,、ah. the colloquial that gets muddy. Right. It's popular in terms of as a commonly used by tea farmers, but、right. those are not necessarily right. So it's not about popular. Like we have to say Longjin, not Dragonwell. That's not what they are saying.、Right. This is saying how if everybody calling all the tea Dragonwell, we have to fix that. Right. That Or everybody, for example, like you said, everybody's calling anything that's not their top grade green tea Maofang. We, you know, and but there's really different processes involved. Mm, yeah,、How、like you... Chuesh, people also ask, "Oh, what is Chuesh?"、Mm. Well, first, ideally, ask where you bought it, so you have a little bit more background. So Chuesh could come from any provinces,、mm. could be anything. And、uh, nowadays, people just、uh, due to marketing reasons, so it could be anything, literally. Right, and the、uh, like. I wanted to point out something else that he he kind of concludes with two main things, right?、Um, Uh, single teas with tons of different names,、mm-hmm. consolidate, right? And、mm-hmm. one tea with a whole bunch of names,、um, or no, a bunch of names applied to different teas, 
don't <laughs> right yeah. consolidate. Yeah, it could be like a renamed, uh, you yeah. know, or Which adding the location in yeah. front or something right. like that, Just based on those uh, tradition of uh, ways to name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, cool. so this section wasn't really like. Uh, it's just laying the foundation of uh, what's the situation in Chinese tea name. Mm. You have to know the tea name to start categorizing. Yeah, and tons of great examples. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. I saw so much chatter on the, okay, okay. On the channel I'm so about... I'm so happy you guys are having a great discussion. Yeah, and a lot of it's about music, metal, and I made a mistake about metalcore. So what I'm going to suggest, because I even got... Um, ben even pointed out how cute I am to bring it back to tea, because this is Sunday <laughs> Tea Book, not Sunday Metal Book. But, um, but what I'm going to suggest, guys, is... Uh, let me just go here is if you're not on the Discord, jump on the Discord. I was a bit more um, early, in the early days of the Discord, I was a bit more engaged, especially there's, um, there's, there's voice rooms where we can go and talk to each other and we can have music and we could do like a tea and music night impromptu. We could just show up there, whoever's there, you could show me what metalcore is because you can put songs in the playlist, mm. I can put songs in the playlist. We could have some tea and fun times there. So. I think that's a great way to come back to this music theme, which so many of you seem to love. I love it too. But yes, you were right. I was being super cute, trying to stay on track. Don't get too, I really want to go off track. <laughs> I want to talk about music. I want to learn more about metalcore. I want to hear some examples. Let's do that in the Discord, guys. I think that would be so much fun. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, and Josh is talking about metalcore. No rap See, in ben, metalcore? Ben is, yeah, there's no rap. I made a mistake about that. I basically have every single genre of music you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. So I love that. I loved it. And I loved it. I love to do these kind of music parties because as much as I love the newer music services they can show you and help you explore, nothing's as good as like-minded or not like-minded people to help expose you to something new and exciting. Just like with tea. Just like with tea, actually. Mm -hmm. Polite way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? And Josh was surprised if Jin Jimmy doesn't mean golden eyebrow, what does it mean? Oh, Jin mm. means gold, yes. Jin uh, uh, is uh, 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 expensive horse. Like oh, those oh. super, super fine uh, horse. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. And um, May is the shape, but um, it's not literally an eyebrow. It's that yes. it's that curve, more like a yeah, character a, might have that shape. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's, it's um, metaphoric. Mm. Like mm. Uh, it's not a. I see those uh, translation like uh, beautiful, uh, what beautiful eyebrows and stuff. Whoa. Anyway, so I don't want to talk too much about uh, the characters and translations and stuff. I'm gonna. I have a video about Chinese language, and so yeah, if definitely you are stay tuned for that. It's going in to be this excellent. kind of thing, I want to explain a little bit about tones, pinyins, and Chinese, and uh, those kind of little things. And Jubai Jia quotes a little quote from Frank Zappa: "There, there's only two kinds of music: good music and bad music. Couldn't agree more." And um, then Josh corrects me about metalcore. Absolutely, I always say um, everybody is talking about music. I, I really think we should do this, guys. I think we should jump on and have a big uh, listening party. And Jubaiji says, as for translation, that is why I prefer the English word down for Mao instead of hair because it, oh, down, like um, feathers, uh, duck feathers, you know, duck ah. down. Uh, rain, uh, not raincoat, winter coat. Reminds me of down of a thistle or something soft. Um, and Josh is getting some massive Hui Gun off of his Jing Mai, uh, which just kicked in. It always seems mm. to be on the fifth or sixth infusion. I like drinking thick, syrupy wildflowers. Nice. Let us know your tasting notes. I love mm. to hear that. Josh, thanks for sharing that. That is really, uh, first, mouth-watering to hear your tasting notes. And let me share some tasting notes. I've been a little too quiet. This tea, although it was only four grams, has endured quite nicely. Yeah, I um, have you're, been brewing. You're, your brewing is amazing. Yeah, you've been <laughs> really timing it. I have to say myself a little bit shocked. I really thought it would die like halfway mm. or something, mm. but it's still going. So. It's still got, and it's been consistent, I have to say. It still has that sweetness with that note of hay. It's very... What is this kale equals good? Stop with this thing. On. I love how he teases you. Right? <laughs> 
Oh. Kale equal, listen, I can prove to you that kale is not good. We threw kale, there's a rabbit, <laughs> literally in the middle of winter, okay? Everything's blanketed in snow. There's not a piece of food to be found. So we threw some fresh kale out. You can imagine why I did this. I threw <laughs> some fresh kale out for the bunny. He hopped over to the kale and he hopped away into the snow. He didn't touch it. I can take a picture of it. It's still out there. It turned brown. He didn't touch the stuff, okay? What does that tell you? It's clear. Okay, no, just kidding. Let's get off the kale. Kale battles. We could do that on Discord too. Kale battles. I think nomenclature based on processing would actually be more helpful than the current color-based one. Uh. It's not really color based though, is it? It just uses colors, which I, had, which I concur obfuscates the fact that it's yeah. not color based. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, Professor Chen Chai explained why he uses this. Oh, cool. So we're going to get there. So uh, I see that's why I feel like this article is very uh, valuable because, a big, because like a Besides, he explains everything about his reasons and stuff, and I think that's solid. It's also very tied with a real life situation. Chinese tea is not lab than application, not like a like a Western medicine, right? Develop in the lab, do experiment, mm. then go to real life. Yeah, that's different. Mm. Or any science based stuff right. or technology is like that. Chinese tea is from the mass mass. Common people, right? Those farmers don't mm. read, don't do. They know their how to call their stuff, to then summarize everything, right. categorize everything. Then have a across system a massive country, a massive yes. region of production with people doing things totally right. differently, totally isolated from one another. Right. So it has elements almost like mm. a, you know, a, like a art rather than science mm. kind of elements. Well, you also have the science elements or, when you talk about it. Or taxonomy, like yes. natural taxonomy, where you've got this scattering of animals and you didn't make them. They just all cropped up yes. from different places. And you're going to have, you know, just like in taxonomy, you, you classify this like mm. this today and you realize, ooh, actually it came from over here historically. And, yeah, and that's mm. once Good I one. think once we go through the whole article, you will realize yeah. why even till today with so much uh, technology advance and everything, this system roughly still stands and uh, mm. the you know the majority of chinese uh, uh ex tea experts uh, still think that so far the nobody says any system is perfect right so far right, it's right. still very in use holding its own yeah but holding nowadays we have more uh they just implement a new system in china to uh, differentiate a 6t category based on chemical pure chemical Oh, neat. Mm. So this, they put the science underneath the system. Yeah, but still that kind of thing. So nice. it's uh, culturally and scientifically work nicely. Mm. Cindy says that the article is really helpful. Tea names can be so confusing, but this helped. So that's excellent. That is precisely why we're here. And I'm really excited by what you're saying. By I'm looking forward to digging into this article more and really getting a deeper understanding of, uh, of the, the roots of this system. Mm. Um, it's a nice congregation with a lot of chatter. Ah, yes, I think the channel, our, our whole thing here. We're all like-minded, time signature kale equals good. Um, <laughs> Josh says, oh, sorry guys, I'm still not quite clear what Jinjin Mei translates to, sorry. What did we say about translations, Josh? Jinjin Mei is Jinjin Mei. <laughs> no, you can, it's um, gold, expensive golden, golden okay. expensive horse. Huh? Expensive horse doesn't sound good. It really like a yeah. It's not gonna horse. sound good. I think we it know that. It never sounds right? good, right? Golden expensive horse in this shape, in the eyebrow shape, mm. like yes. There we go. This I long. think we answered about right. this long of the translation. Yeah. That's just individual uh, uh, character translation. Mm -hmm. So, um, and if you dig into that T and why it exists. You know, and the elegance of the name as it appears in Chinese, it all makes really good right? sense. And why is a dream? Mm. There's mm. a lot of intention there. They want to, mm. horse is a, considered a really good thing in China. Mm. A lot of the words with horse is a positive word, mm. right? So it also have his expectation in this product. Mm. So right. mm, 
yeah, I really think uh, it's re- like it's out of my ability to really translate. It's a whole video. I can only tell you each word, right? right? But in terms of uh, is that gold, is that golden? Uh, how do you translate beautiful or expensive horse? It really comes it's back really to really up to linguistic. Okay, I'm just your uh, upcoming video too addresses this because as soon as you smash those characters together, there's a change. So check out that video. Mm. Check out that video. It's going to be really enlightening for for uh, for you guys who are into that. I think, and for you those who are not, I really loved it. Um, I got to see it first because hey, I'm here. <laughs> Fernanda says kale equals awesome. Yes, kale some. Okay, everybody, I get it, I get it, I get it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat kale on this okay. channel someday. I, I, I planted a bunch meeting. of baby kales, so hopefully. It yeah, we've got. Oh, we should give them a garden tour on Discord too. We'll do a few fun things on Discord. Okay. Time Signature says flavor notes are super fascinating. I can basically only pick up mm. on basic ones like sweetness, bitterness, sourness, but not all those hay, morning dew, etc. Mm. Morning dew, good one. I'm not sure what morning dew tastes like. I never. Go and drink morning. Light, do refreshing, sweet. Light, refreshing, sweet. Mm. I was going to say this has that. With that watery. Yeah, kind yeah. Of hey, in China we use... <laughs> Why I say hey? <laughs> anyway, my Chinese, sometimes when I talk free, my Chinese really leaks out right, a lot. Right. So we used to, uh, like, uh, the historically people, like, uh, you know, mm, like rich families, noble people, collect the snow waters or morning dews to mm. brew tea. Mm, right, right. Mm. So... <laughs> Fernanda says premium stallion or mare and time signature MMA says this tea has notes of eyebrow snail and expensive <laughs> and expensive horse. So my only question is what are you drinking like a shem- shampooar I guess or <laughs> Fernanda says no blurgs that would be a bad no yeah, that would be a bad tea and duck <laughs> duty. <laughs> oh that's good that You're is gold best. that is gold. Yes also blurgs. <laughs> Josh says, it's okay, it's okay, not because I uh, want a pretty translation to use, I just want to understand for myself what it means. Mm. And perhaps golden arched stallion, I mean, yeah. Check out the video, it's really complicated. It's, that's why we don't translate them is precisely because you, it's almost like a paragraph to it just, it's lost in translation. And well, not all of us are patient enough to wait for Jen's amazing upcoming video. Too bad, you don't have a choice. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Kale, kale for you need to cook with smoked meat. Mm. I think smoked meat can make everything better, particularly bacon. Mm. All right, guys. This has been so fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, making our way through this document. It's uh, it's another exciting uh, paper. This one's a paper, I guess, or an article. Really getting underneath and into where this, these six categories come from and why and, they and were picked. Most of your questions will be answered mm. throughout this uh, live session. So. Yeah. So um, I've been on the Discord screen forever, but if you're not on the Discord, um, and especially if you're into music, get on the Discord, come and join us. Let's have a informal tea and music party at some point uh, later this week. Maybe even I'll jump on later today. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Josh, I want to hear some metalcore. Mm. We can all throw songs onto a playlist and just have a little uh, fun there. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you, uh, hopefully all of you there, but whoever wants to join that, that would be awesome. All right, so anything else to say? We've already plugged the language video a ton. We've got a bunch of new videos out though, if you haven't. And I think a time signature MMA is a linguistic, right? He's a linguist? I think so. I don't know. I th- did he? If I didn't remember. Anyway, I remember we seem to have somebody specialized in that. So mm. uh, if I say something wrong, just correct me. Okay. I'd love to learn, but uh, I'm just sharing what I know. So help clear up a little bit. I oh. wanted people to be to uh, have high hope. And it yeah. Comes out that. Max says, this is a really great series. Need to set an alarm for Sundays. That is awesome. That leads perfectly into my little spiel, which is if you haven't already subscribed, (laughs) click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell, which functions as a little alarm to let you know whenever we go live or post a new video. So that was just for you, Max. But thank you for enjoying it. Thank you for being here. And everybody, Mm. thank you so much to all of you guys. I can't name... I can name all. I'll try and name all your names. And if I forget anybody, I apologize. Fernanda, Cindy, Time Signature, Josh... Chubai Gia, uh, Lolo, you were commenting lots. Everybody's nice. getting involved. Yeah. Everybody's asking questions, yeah. commenting, talking about music, talking about tea names, talking about 
kale. It's all good. I love it. Keep it up. We're having fun, but we're learning. We're getting to the bottom of things. We're getting to the bottom of our cups. So it's time for us now to say goodbye. Until next week and until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Can I hit the right button or will we go to some random screen? <laughs> Thank you.